Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Um, today I would like to continue my discussion about random graphs and, well, we'll see a certain type of questions regarding subgraphs. Um, in the end, the theorem itself would be very nice, but maybe not so exciting. And the more exciting part is the takeaway message that I'm going to stress. So there will be a lot of edges. So a lot, a lot, a lot of edges. I promise you a lot of edges. And kind of the point here is that I kind of want to motivate what's following in the next few videos, like we want to discuss uh, what properties are almost always true. So take a graph or put every graphs in, uh, all graphs in the back and draw out a random graph, draw out a graph randomly, not a random graph. We know by now what random graphs are. Draw out a graph, uh, pull out a graph randomly. How likely does it satisfy to be connected or something like that? So that's the kind of the question I would like to answer. But I will start with some way easier question, which has a very, very, very satisfying answer. So I would like to start with the following question. Is your favorite graph a random graph? Yeah. So, or is my favorite graph a random graph? Or is some fixed graph a random graph? Uh, maybe this is your favorite graph. Uh, let me try to, I will not tell you how, what the rule is. Maybe you get this yourself, but it's very simple. It has a pentagon at the outside and it has another pentagon at the inside, but the inside pentagon is maybe a little bit messed up. So it goes like uh, this, like the star, and then you just connect uh, things to the outside. Anyway, um, that's a graph. Might not be your favorite graph. It's not my favorite graph, but I guess it's very difficult to illustrate uh, a slide where everyone's favorite graph turns up. Uh, so just imagine whatever you see is your favorite graph. And if you don't have a favorite graph, I feel very sorry for you. You should have a favorite graph. Um, so anyway, I don't have a favorite graph, but anyway, and I'm telling you to have a favorite graph. Anyway, so here's a question. How likely is your favorite graph to be a random graph? Right? So um, essentially, uh, we have a measurement of what is what is a random graph. I pick your, your graph, your favorite graph, and we check whether it's random or not. So that's a really good question because essentially it's kind of trying to say something about properties of random graphs. But it's also a really bad question because well, what does it even mean to be a random graph in this case? So I will reformulate the question uh, to make it better to understand, or maybe not better to understand, but certainly uh, easier to mathematically verify. Okay, so here's a real question. So I take uh, a graph and I ask how uh, likely does it appear or how, or how often does it appear as a subgraph of a random graph. That random graph is well defined. We had two of two models of them and I will mostly stick with the uh, coin flip model where there was a probability P and this is, I call that the bottom to top model. Um, but there's a similar statement for the other one. I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on this too much. This is just a very similar statement. Anyway, so the question is whether it's a subgraph. Like here's a subgraph and green is a really shitty color on a green background. So let me change the color to this one. Uh, so here's a subgraph and I really mean subgraph just a collection of edges and the vertices in the original graph. So not in use subgraph, I can miss uh, a natural edge here. So the, the red parts here are subgraph, right? And I will just ask the question, how likely does G appear? How often does G appear? Uh, and that's certainly a better type of question than is it a random graph itself? It's kind of the same type of question if you think about it, but it's, it's still uh, a somewhat better question. And what was, should what should we expect? And here's kind of the takeaway message of what's happening all the time in this field. So what should we expect? Well, let's say my probability is constant. And let's say, or oh, I should have added this. Let's say it's not zero, right? Anything between the, uh, strictly zero and whatever one is okay uh, would be good. But let's say it's constant 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.01, doesn't matter, but something constant. And remember that this probability is we take two vertices and we with probability P put an edge between them. Okay. And now we have this idea that we have a large graph with a lot of vertices. 
So here's my favorite vertex. And then I have a lot of vertices down here. And for each pair, I will now flip my little coin and check um, whether I will put an edge or not. And as you can already see, if n is very large, so this set of possible partners here is really large, eventually I will put certainly a lot of edges here. And that's that's kind of the point why those random graphs usually tend to have a lot of edges. So this one is a random graph where P was 0 0.1, and there are not so many vertices, but as you can already see, they have a lot of edges already. So th those random graphs contain a lot of edges. In other words, your favorite graph, G, should appear almost surely, right? So there's a lot of space to put it into. And yeah, that's exactly um, what the theorem says, just in a slightly more complicated language. Um, because I now even allow P to vary with N. And if P varies with N, you need this condition. And then you get the, the statement that we want. For fixed P, it's always good. Um, but if P varies, uh, we, get, we, we, get, we need those conditions to get the correct statement. And the statement is every G appears almost always in, uh, in the, those two graphs. So this has a dual statement which looks exactly the same, which I'm not going too much into details, but it works for independent of the random model. And the whole point here is that we kind of give up on having an almost statement, and sorry, an always statement, and we are happy with an almost always statement, which is kind of a weaker version, but then allows us to go way further with our um, kind of with our uh, range of potential theorems. And that's, that's kind of the whole idea. And eventually what should always happen is some law of, of, of large numbers, that everything kind of converges um, to some um, kind of, kind of some, some infinity state. And at infinity, those graphs have just so many edges that everything will appear anyway. And the takeaway message, so we kind of can ignore that theorem, that the details of the theorem is not so important. But the takeaway message is that these guys tend to have uh, like really many edges, like many, many edges. Keep this picture here in mind. This was just probability 10% and <laughs> a lot of edges. So um, the real takeaway is exactly that. And if you think about that a little bit, I have this wannabe consequence here, which we are going to explore uh, in future videos, is that Properties that are easily satisfied with many edges, essentially almost all graphs should have that property. And on the other hand, if the property is really difficult to satisfy with many edges, then almost no graph should have that property. So um, what I just did naively here is the following. So there are two conditions a graph could satisfy, and they're kind of doing the opposite. So one of them is really easy satisfied if you have lots of edges, uh, the Hamiltonian property, and one of them is really difficult to be satisfied with a lot of edges, the Eulerian property. So Eulerian, the bottom one, is the following. Um, so you are asking for a, a trail in your graph such that every edge, every edge is visited exactly once. And that's really difficult to satisfy if you have many edges because you somehow need a pass to go through all those edges. Um, with contrast, the top one is asking for a trail that visits every vertex exactly once. And that's just really easy to be satisfied with many edges because then you have many options to go around. Okay, so we have an easy property in this one here, and we have a difficult property, this one here. And so if the philosophy with many edges is correct, one of them should drop to zero, and one of them should drop to one, increase to one. Uh, in the question of how many graphs among all graphs satisfy that property. And that's exactly what the plot here does. Uh, so I have a, a database of Metamatica as a database of graphs up to 18 vertices. And I just checked how many, the percentage, how many of them are Hamiltonian. And it's about 80%. And I checked how many are Eulerian and it's about whatever it is, 0 0.1. 10%. And this clearly goes to zero and the other one eventually, it has some static problems, it goes up and down, but eventually this will go um, to one. 
So that's the takeaway message. And that's what we will discuss kind of formally in uh, future videos. So properties that are easy satisfied with many edges should be almost always true. And note that proving that a graph is Hamiltonian is difficult, right? But it almost always is. So if someone asks you, is this graph Hamiltonian? And you're not sure, then you should answer, yes, it is. And that's the advantage of um, having this almost always versus always, right? So now we can make statements of the form, 100% of all graphs are Hamiltonian and the 100 runs over an infinite set. So it's actually not really meaning 100%. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.